This is your WTIA3 forecast first, sponsored by CIBM Bank. 9 o'clock on this Friday morning, and thank you for joining us. We've got cloudy skies and also some rain showers, too, moving through portions of our viewing area. This is Decatur currently on our Florida America INA camera. And then behind me, you can also see our temperatures, which range from, uh, for the most part, the middle 60s to the upper 70s. But we are also seeing more in the way of these light rain showers coming in from the northwest, and so we'll monitor those throughout the rest of the morning. Our dew points right now are anywhere from the uh, middle 60s to the uh, low and 70s. So a little bit humid out there with our winds, kind of variable current generally out of the east. You'll see our forecast planner does call for more in the way of some scattered showers and some storms for today and temperatures will be rising into the 70s and 80s if we're able to clear out some of these clouds. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Alrighty, Jack, thank you so much, and thank you at home for joining us. I'm Matthew White. And I'm Karina Rubio. We have a lot in store for you in the next hour of the morning show, but first let's take a look at your eye opener. People are stunned after learning one of their neighbors was shot yesterday morning and later died. Why police are saying it's done from a domestic dispute. Also, the Chicago Cubs are now being sued by the U.S. Attorney's Office. More on that in our trending topics of the day. Plus, a homeowner is demanding change in the wake of another shooting. We'll tell you how council members are reacting. All that and more in store for you on The Morning Show, which starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is The Morning Show on WCIA 3 News. Are you aware of anything that happened just next door to you this morning? No. I didn't hear anything. People were stunned after learning one of their neighbors was shot and later died. Champaign police say it all stemmed from a domestic dispute. Police say they interviewed the other person involved, but they were not arrested because investigators are still going through evidence. Now officers responded to Beardsley and 5th Street for this shooting after 5 o'clock Thursday morning, and that's when police found 34-year-old LaToya Gwynn with a gunshot wound. WCI 3s Chance Stickland spoke with investigators and neighbors in that area, and he's going to tell us more. It should be a nice place to stay. It used to be a good neighborhood around here. It used to be pretty quiet. It started as a quiet morning in Champaign until neighbors woke up to the sound of gunfire. When Tina Marshall found out her neighbor, Latoya Gwynn, had been shot, she was shocked. It was surprising because it's usually pretty quiet up here. Investigators say Gwynn lived in the home and was involved in some sort of domestic dispute with a gun. They say the gun went off and she was hit. Shortly after, police responded, realized she had been shot, and she was taken to the hospital where she later died. Police have spoken to someone who may have been involved, but we're working to learn whether they're a suspect. They say there's no threat to the community, and they're not looking for anyone else in connection to the shooting. Champaign police say domestic violence cases topped more than 870 incidents in 2019, growing to more than 980 in 2020. One Urbana Domestic Violence Prevention Center is stepping in to help. When you have resources for people going through this, you're helping them live full lives. Bryce Decker with Courage Connection says if you know of someone going through this, make the call because it can end up saving someone's life. All right, well now keep in mind too, Courage Connection offers a variety of services for victims of domestic violence, and that includes a legal advocacy program as well as therapy and counseling services and much more. You can learn all of that on our website, WCIA.com. And you can also contact the Domestic Violence Hotline using the numbers right there on your screen. And those numbers are also posted on our website. In other news, a Ford County man is dead after a car crash. This happened yesterday morning on I-57 between Champaign and Rantoul. State police say Kyle Messer from Paxton was driving south when his car hit a guardrail and caught fire. He was pronounced dead on scene. And deputies are investigating after a dog was found dead and discarded in a suitcase. That happened in DeWitt County. The sheriff says the suitcase was found on July 1st along a creek on Green Valley Road. The dog's body was taken to animal control for more investigation and testing. Authorities have now done more than 20 interviews. No one has been arrested. It's my neighborhood. You know, it's my house. My family lives there. Well, his house is located here in Champaign, and it's been shot at twice in the last few months. Back in February, a bullet went through a front window, and then a second shooting happened this month, but on the busy road in front of his house. 
That's right. We told you last week about the most recent shooting. Police say the drive-by happened on West University at the corner of Fair Street. It sent a 20-year-old to the hospital. Target 3 investigative reporter Renee Cooper sat down with the homeowner and has this report. I noticed some flashing lights outside, the same window that they shot the first time. Albert Moore watched the aftermath of a shootout unfold in front of his home, a home where he and his wife feel less safe these days. There's people across the street. The little boy won't even play outside anymore. You know, because he's scared. Months earlier, a bullet flew through the front window, back out through this door, and lodged itself in the porch wall. Same corner, four months apart. You know, um... Any apparent reason for that, that you've been... No, no, there's absolutely no, it's a random act, but it's happening too frequently. In February, the Moores told counsel about their home being hit. Until you come in, because somebody else's neighborhood is being shot up, I don't want to hear it. Councilwoman Alicia Beck's reaction to Moore's comments caused a stir. I want you to come in because you're concerned that black and brown babies are being shot in the street. It took me a moment to actually process what she said. There is truth in the data Beck is referencing. The majority of gun violence in the city is happening in majority minority neighborhoods where unemployment is above average and income is below. And there's no getting past that. That's evident. You know, a bullet went through my house. If I was home, that's the window that I generally look out. In the months since, Beck has gotten some backlash. Now, she's missed the last five council meetings dating back to late May. Fellow council member and attorney Tom Bruno says he doesn't know why she hasn't shown up but there's no city ordinance requiring her presence. And council members receive their $168 stipend every two weeks, regardless. In the meantime, Moore wants to see license plate readers nearby and stop signs added on West University Avenue where the shootings happened. There are none in the mile stretch between Prospect and Mattis. It's a one-way street. You know, there's plenty of auxiliary avenues to get off of once you're on university. Plus. You know, it's a straight shot. You know, you can drive as fast as you want on it, it seems like. All right, and now that you're up to speed on the news, let's go ahead and check in with Jack for the weather. Jack stepped outside earlier this morning, and the song Raindrops Keep Falling on My Head came into my head because there were some on my head this afternoon. Yeah. Can yep. you sing it? Uh, okay. Uh, 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 <laughs> maybe not this afternoon. <laughs> we'll practice. I'll practice later. <laughs> Yeah, you can do it for the noon show if you want to. Yeah, we do have some uh, these light rain showers passing on through the area, and these rain showers are holding together too, which is nice to see. This is our view currently from town here in Champaign on a Florida America on a camera. We've got cloudy skies, and again, you can't really tell because things are falling pretty light, but every once in a while you can see some raindrops as these pass on through. You see that Storm Tracker Doppler does have this kind of just wide area of rain showers. It's not overly heavy or anything like that, but uh, it is coming in and still kind of holding together, which is great to see. But it is just a light, steady rain that is out there. You've got much more in the way of some heavier rain with even some thunderstorms in the far northwest corner of the state going into the uh, southwestern corner of, of uh, Wisconsin and also into Iowa, too, there. So we'll see if any of those heavy rain showers are able to hold together as they come closer to us. There has still kind of been the overall weakening trend here and th as the rain kind of fizzles out as it gets closer. But overall, though, it's still looking to be a uh, chance of rain is good for us here. Now, temperatures right now are in the upper 60s to low s or, uh, upper 70s from Pontiac to Effingham. And you got the dew points that also range from the middle 60s to the low 70s with winds kind of variable here and there. So your cast high temperatures for today. If we are able to get a little bit more in the way of some dry weather here by this afternoon, especially late this afternoon, we'll probably be able to get into the low and middle 80s. If we've got more cloud cover that develops and we just keep on getting more and more rain showers, which people probably won't be uh, too disappointed about, uh, we'll likely stay in the upper 70s. But uh, yeah, chance of rain is out there, which is good. <laughs> yes. Seems like we keep getting just a little short burst, but we're still waiting for that big downpour. Today. Yeah, yeah. We've got more in the way of some rain showers and storms for us by uh, Sunday. So hopefully that will also give us chances here and there. But after that, it's done. So uh, we're going to look at another dry stretch here by the time we get to next week. All righty, more rain dancing on the way then. <laughs> Might have to do that. <laughs> be dancing and singing then. Yeah. <laughs> Karina trying to put the spot. Yeah. Double threat. <laughs> All right, we're now turning to our trending topics of the day. First up, Heinz is announcing the arrival of a new product. It's called
called spoon fries and they're fries shaped like a spoon as you can probably guess and they released them to celebrate National Fries Day. Those look so weird. The fries make it easy for a spoonful of ketchup. Now, there may be some bad news. Spoon fries are currently only in the UK. A wider release has yet to be launched. <laughs> why would they put them over there? I don't know. <laughs> Jack's like, why start there? Yeah. <laughs> they look pretty cool, but I don't no, you know how things look better in photos yes. than they would in real life? I feel like that might be the case. And, like, what happens if it's, like, soggy? Ew. And, like, it Ooh, bends when you, like, put it in there. You know what I mean? You're like are ruining yeah. the experience. I mean, but you know, you get, like, you get, like, some of those the, yeah. really, really, like, yeah. like, crusty fries, which don't taste very good. Mm -hmm. And you have those, like, really soggy ones, too. Very so we true. need the in-between. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like, when they change the form of these fries, does that mean, like, the texture will change? Because, I mean, they're now shaped like a spoon, and the end of it kind of looks harder now. So I'm afraid that the taste won't be the same when you change forms like this. I mean, this is all good. A long way to find out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, do you guys good. dip your fries in milkshakes? Are you guys those kind of people Ooh. who do that? Jack Occasionally, I've done it. I could see it being useful in that. I tried it. It's pretty good, as Is long it as really? it's chocolate, with the chocolate milk. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> you have to have a specific flavor. Yeah, it's got to be chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so the Cubs are being sued by the U.S. Attorney's Office for violating the Americans with Disabilities Act. The lawsuit alleges that the team did not provide proper access for people with disab disabilities while renovating Wrigley Field between 2014 and 2019. It says the club removed the best wheelchair seating in the stadium and failed to remove architectural barriers to access among other things. Prosecutors are seeking an injunction that would force the Cubs to comply with ADA requirements and pay compensatory damages. Yikes. That's interesting there. Yeah. I've not been to Wrigley in a long time, so Same. I don't, I mean, I've seen it what it looks like after the renovation on TV, but right. never in person. I haven't been at all. Have you, Karina? Recently? Yeah, I've been recently last summer. It's the best field, in my opinion, but oh, yeah. I would also say that it's the one downside about those older, more historic stadiums. You're going to have issues like yeah. that, and you got to stay on top of those renovations. Yeah, yeah, and I, I do remember going there before the renovation as a as a big guy. It's like, I mean, I'm just I'm just <laughs> scrunched in yeah. there. You know, me, me being so tall, my, I'm like my knees are just so high up. So doing knee crunches the whole game. Yeah, yeah, wow. um, but you got to Got to fix that problem. Got to yeah. answer yep. the call. Yep. Got to make it accessible for everyone. Correct, yeah. correct. Absolutely. All righty. Well, this will be a fun trend. A rare lobster was discovered at a red lobster. <laughs> this orange guy on your screen was almost the main course. It was at a restaurant in Hollywood, Florida, and the staff actually noticed it when they opened a recent shipment of live lobsters. And the odds of finding an orange lobster are actually one in 30 million. So the red lobster staff decided to name her Cheddar, all in honor of their famous biscuits, which if you haven't had, they're really good. And she was relocated to an aquarium in Myrtle Beach. No way. So Cheddar wow. is safe. She was huh. not eaten. She escaped her fate there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Karina. She was not on the plate. Like, like at the White House when they pardon the turkey. <laughs> yeah. It's been the, the lobster. Pardoning the lobster. I didn't even know that orange ones specifically were rare, though. That's pretty I, cool. I didn't either. Yeah, I mean. So you definitely can't eat it. Though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, if it's one in a million, you definitely got to give it a good home. One in 30 million. Oh, 30 yeah, it's million. at one in 30. Yeah, yeah I one in 30 part. million. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I mean, orange and red are pretty one close to each other on right. the color scale. So you would think like it would be very common because I mean, it's not that far away from being red. <laughs> right. But and they like, do have live lobsters in Red Lobster in that big yeah. tank when you walk in yeah. sometimes. So well, and sometimes they kind of look like almost like bluish mm -hmm. because of like how the the light comes through the water. Mm -hmm. um, but. I mean, yeah, if he's a rare guy like that, I'm glad he's saved. <laughs> this just reminds me of something I saw on TikTok. These guys do dares, and they went to Red Lobster, but brought their own lobster and just dumped it into the tank, and they ended up cooking it and serving it. They got in some trouble for that, oh, though, afterward. Wow, sure and so did, did that Red Lobster location. <laughs> but. Some tainted lobsters <laughs> yeah. in the tank. You can't do that. <laughs> and they're just so big, too. You don't yeah, realize I how know. big they actually are. Their claws, too. Yikes. All right, well, still to come here on The Morning Show, we're going to have your national news headlines up next. That's right. We're going to tell you why the Secret Service is in the crosshairs again right after the short break.
from your local news leader, Karina Rubio, Matthew White, and Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jack Durfin. You're watching The Morning Show at 9 on WCIA 3. Welcome back. Now taking a look at today's national news headlines. A two-week countdown is on in Los Angeles County for the return of a possible mask requirement. COVID-19 cases have spiked to what the CDC considers a high level, which would trigger the mandate if transmission has not fallen. CDC data shows that a third of all counties in the U.S. are at a high level. Well, the Topps grocery store in Buffalo, New York, does reopen today, but it's where 10 African-American people were killed by a gunman. The Topps has been renovated since, and it came with security upgrades and aesthetic changes, as well as improved food offerings. But there are still some residents who want the store torn down completely, and instead they want a memorial park in its place. And the Secret Service is again in the crosshairs of the Congressional Committee looking into the Capitol Hill riot. An internal watchdog says the agency that protects the president deleted messages from January 5th and 6th of last year. So Bradley Blackburn will report more on this from New York. The head of the House January 6th committee is vowing to investigate what he called the extraordinarily troubling destruction of Secret Service records. A letter has been obtained by CBS News from the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General to a pair of congressional committees. It said that many Secret Service agents' text messages from January 5th and 6th, 2021 were erased as part of a device replacement program. What's more, the Inspector General says the texts were deleted after his investigators asked for them. A spokesman for the Secret Service denied any wrongdoing. Special agent in charge Steve Kopeck said some data was lost when the cell phones were reset during a scheduled system migration. Kopeck also pushed back on the timing of the IG's request for electronic communications. He said the agency wasn't told to provide the records until February 26th, more than seven weeks after the riot. The Secret Service's activities had already drawn the scrutiny of the January 6th committee. Last month, a former White House aide testified she was told President Trump had an altercation with an agent who refused to take him to the Capitol. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. The agents involved denied those claims, and according to the Associated Press, the driver and a member of Trump's security detail are willing to refute the story under oath. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. All right, still to come here on the morning show, those raindrops are starting to fall. Jack will tell you what those rain chances are over this weekend after this quick break.
Paramount Plus. Dow Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jack Gerfin. Later on today, we've got Our Town Mattoon. We've got Kevin, and we think Jacob's going to be there, too. We're just kind of uh, trying to nail down his schedule. But uh, either way, one of them or both of them will be there uh, to program your weather radios. And you can buy one or you can bring your own if you already have one. If you need to buy one, you can buy one from the, uh, the tent there, $34.95. And again, that will be at Our Town Mattoon later on today. You'll see that our Champaign, Florida, America, I-9 cameras got the clouds and the rain showers that are out there. It's a fairly light rain, as you can see with not only the picture back there as in the last graphic, but also the radar too. It's not exactly the brightest color, so we're not calling for a whole lot of heavy rain out there today, but just kind of more of a steadier light rain as that uh, passes on through. But anything is good. Th anything is good. Uh, we're just going to hopefully see that this, maybe some of these heavier showers with the storms, maybe those will hold on together and come on into our area to give us some decent chances for some rain. But we are dealing with this now for the next couple hours, we're thinking, into the early afternoon. Temperatures right now where there's a little bit more in the way of cloud cover and the rain showers are more in the upper 60s and low 70s where it's drier. You've got more in the way of some middle 70s and including that uh, upper 70, 77 there in Effingham. And our dew points are also kind of doing the same thing too. They're higher where things are a little bit drier because it's a little bit warmer, more muggier down in that, in that part of the viewing area. We'll top out at 85 for today. That will be if we can clear out some of our clouds and the rain will be done by this afternoon. Here's what it looks like in future track. As of right now, we're kind of thinking that, again, these light to moderate rain showers will be moving through the rest of the morning. By early afternoon, that should be done. And you'll see that we've got clearing skies by the middle of afternoon. So that's when we expect there to probably be enough warming to get our temperatures into the low and middle 80s. But then by tonight, we've got more clouds and the chance for some scattered showers and storms will be there once again. Like this afternoon, though, we've got things pretty spotty as of right now. So it's not going to be anything, a giant, huge area of heavy rain that'll be coming through tonight. It'll be kind of spotty. Lows will be around 70. Now, you'll see that we have the chance for rain for the weekend. Most of our rain, though, on Saturday is going to be coming in uh, late tonight and early tomorrow morning and then another chance coming in by late in the evening so it's pretty much just the bookends of saturday most of the daytime hours should in fact be uh, dry just warm and humid getting to around 90. there's a better chance for some spotty showers and storms on sunday with temperatures there coming in around 82. so we got our pool forecast for tomorrow again like i said our chance for rain are there in the morning and then in the evening but much of the actual daylight hours are going to be uh, just fine there with probably a little bit more cloud cover and temperatures right around 90. Like I said, we've got a chance for some rain showers and some storms again on Sunday. Once that chance is done, we are then dry the rest of our week. And again, we are still going to be worrying about some drought conditions here across central Illinois. Our latest model, though, is actually bringing a ton of rain now. Hopefully this would be correct because uh, this would uh, really help things out here. But that would be, we're thinking that's probably going to be if it brings down those heavy rain showers down from uh, Wisconsin right now. We'll have to see how that plays out. But still, we need the rain. We've got the severe drought conditions across uh, portions of our viewing area, including a lot of Champaign County and Douglas County. But again, once we are done with our rain on Sunday evening, we've got a dry and hot forecast after that. We'll be right back after this.
get to take a look now at what's going on around Illinois. Peoria County wrote a check for over $60,000 that went to the Center for Prevention of Abuse, which provides services for domestic violence, along with sexual assault, human trafficking, and more. But the partnership aims to help residents in long-term care facilities. Now, you may see this new CityLink bus wrap driving around the city there, and some of the grant money was used for that new wrap. The president of the CFPA says it will bring more awareness and let people know where they can turn to if they need help. This is something that they're going to see while they're driving to work, while they're driving to the grocery store. And we want people to realize that they can start those difficult conversations with us. There are over 2,500 beds in long-term care facilities in Peoria County. And we want to make sure that every resident that occupies a bed knows their rights. Carol Myrna says the grant will also fund one employee from CFPA's long-term program to specifically work in Peoria. Now, Forest City will be getting visitors come in August. Over a dozen teens from Ukraine plan to visit, and they're from Rockford's sister city of Brovery. The group will spend 11 days visiting local attractions, and then the city of Rockford is still finalizing their plans for the group. But they still need help with transportation, as well as between Rockford and O'Hare, plus restaurants for meals and other things. The students will have their mothers with them, but they were in Brovery during the start of the Russian invasion. A, a wellness trip, a mental health vacation, a bit of normalcy is what we're looking to be able to provide these teenagers um, and their mothers uh, to, to, to have uh, just a reprieve. So the Brovery Relief Fund has raised almost $214,000 plus 270,000 meals to Brovery itself. And more than a decade earlier, in August 2001, Illinois passed a safe haven law that allows parents to give up babies 30 days old or younger, no questions asked. Babies need to be left at a hospital or staffed fire station or police station. And since that law took effect, 150 newborns have been dropped off, but at least 90 infants have been abandoned, just like baby Noah. We now have 150 babies that have been turned in and we celebrate the lives of those children and thank and bless the parents for believing and knowing about the law to, enough to use it. And just within the city of Rockford, there are 11 fire stations which all act as safe havens. All right, well, still to come here at 9, if you've got your taste buds ready, we're going to show you a business with over a trillion combinations to try. Jacob Dickey has more on this in our town, Matt, too, right after the break. You don't want to miss it.
Sign in Savoy. You're watching your local news leader. This is The Morning Show on WCIA 3 News. Well, it only opened just a few weeks ago, but this place right here is already quenching the thirst of people in Coles County. Hopefully you're ready for this because meteorologist Jacob Dickey went on the road and checked out a spot there with a delicious claim to fame. And we're going to show you more at Our Town Matt Toon. I'm Casey Walk. I'm the owner of Ginger Ale's Mattoon. Ginger Ale's is the newest spot in Mattoon to get a cold drink, a hot coffee, and even a savory snack. We are primarily a drive through only drink store. We uh, specialize in um, tea, lemonade. We have Coke and Pepsi products. We have all kinds of different coffee drinks, fraps. Um, our main thing is, is that we can add so many different flavors to any drink. The name Ginger Ale wasn't used just because of the popular soft drink with the same name. It has family meaning going all the way back to the original concession stand in Olney. The people that started Ginger Ale's back in 2015, they just were actually operating a concession stand at their park and they were loving it. And so they decided they were just gonna try to open a year round concession stand. Uh, they are all redheads, so they wanted something to go with the term ginger. And since it was going to be a drink store, they went with ginger ale. But it's not the drink ginger ale that makes this place famous. It's the endless choices they offer. We actually have 2.8 septillion options. If you do the math and figure out you can add one a flavor or you can add 10 flavors, it doesn't matter. It's just a, it's a fun place. But in spite of all the choices, there are some fan favorites. This is our Mattoon Green Wave. So it's a Mountain Dew with blue raspberry and pineapple flavoring. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> this is our ginger juice. This is a fruity drink and you can get it with a sour straw. That's it. This is our shimmer drink. It is a fruity drink as well with carbonation in it and it has edible glitter. You can get the edible glitter in any of our drinks. So this is our marshmallow sweet tea. This is probably one of our very most popular products. It's good as well. Whoa, it? that's really good. We sell a lot of these each day. But don't take my word for it. Locals are already making this a regular stop. I think ginger ales is awesome. I come here all the time. Uh, it's the best place to go and I love it. And I, we come here all the time. It's a great place. I'm really glad that it came to Batu. And as you just heard, already receiving rave reviews. And Ginger Ales is planning on expanding as well. There are going to be new drink stands on the way to Effingham, Robinson, and Savoy by this winter. Well, most historic villages are just replicas, but the one you're about to see is the same as nearly 200 years ago. But you have to take a trip to Bishop Hill to see it. Kennedy Cook shows us what it's like in this morning's Destination, Illinois. United States. But everything I've got comes from Mexico. There are brooms you buy in the store, and then there's a broom built by Frank, a method that dates back far before any big box store existed. I think the tea is over here. Found here in Bishop Hill, a community that dates back to 1846, originally founded by Swedish immigrants who set up a religious communal colony that lasted until 1861. It disbanded and has since developed into a tourist town, welcoming people from all over the world. So I've been coming to Bishop Hill since I was five years old. My first uh, full-time job was here, Bishop Hill, and I've been here 10 years. Todd D. Decker serves as the Bishop Hill Heritage Associate Administrator, meaning he knows all things Bishop Hill. I've always been a history nut. For a small town, there's a lot of things going on that I don't think people realize. We have uh, seven museums in town the most museums per capita in Illinois with centuries of history on display. So you have a lot of history here, a lot of pre-Civil War history here. We have uh, 18 buildings that are still in use that date back to the 1840s, 1850s, and several buildings who were built during the 1860s during the Civil War. We have workshops and lectures and concerts and festivals. Um, you're able to do a lot of different things here in Bishop Hill. Three restaurants, 18 stores, 130 people. We have potters, we have broom makers, we have rag rug weavers, we have antique stores. Something for everyone. Today, Bishop Hill is a living village. People live here, people work here, people work at other places. For a little town out in the middle of the prairie, 130 people, we, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot, a lot of things going on. For Destination Illinois, I'm Kennedy Cook. 
All right, instead of come here on WCIA, a delightful dramedy set in the 1950s and a thriller that goes wrong. Film critic Chuck Kaplinski is in studio to talk about these two movies. We'll be right back. have a friend in the business. This is The Morning Show. I'm going to talk about Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Okay, sure. And I know you've been waiting for that one, right? I was so ready. Right. <laughs> Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris is based on a 1958 novel uh, by Paul Gallico. Uh, and it's the first of four books dealing with this character. And there she is, Leslie Manville. Uh, she plays Mrs. Harris, and she's... Well, she's had some tough times in her life. She's a widow. For, uh, her uh, husband died during World War II. And she, well, she cleans houses. And while cleaning one of these houses, she sees that dress. And that dress she finds is from the House of Dior in Paris. And it becomes her goal to get one of these dresses. So she scrimps and she sha saves and she takes odd jobs and she makes bad bets at the horse track. And, you know, it doesn't work out. Until it does. Fate si shines on her, and before you know it, one thing happens after another, and she's got the money to go to Paris and get this dress. Well, she thinks this is going to be easy. You just fly over, you get the dress, you come back. Well, it's not that easy, because you've got to actually get into the House of Dior, which is premiering their new fall line. Oh, and that's going to be difficult. And she doesn't realize that if she buys a dress, you don't just walk out with the dress. They have to have fittings, and it takes a while, and all these complications ensue. However, as I say, people end up taking her under their wing. You have a widower there who walks her in and shows her the uh, around, points out how to pick out a dress and all these things. There really isn't anything realistic about this movie, and I didn't care. It is a wonderful, wonderful fantasy that, based on her performance, you are rooting for Mrs. Harris from the very first start. And her presence enlightens other people. Basically, the point of this movie is, and it's one that we hear again and again and people ignore again and again, it's the golden rule. When you do good things, good things are going to happen to you. And with the state of the world that is, as it is right now, 
this is a message that I really needed to hear. I can equate this to when I was watching Ted Lasso for the first time during the pandemic, and that message of positivity really uplifted me. Same thing here. I mean, I know I, I, I am not the demographic for this film by any stretch, <laughs> yet I was so incredibly charmed by this movie because, again, that whole message of helping out other people and how that comes back to you, that doesn't go out of style at all, no matter what the story is. So Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris, it is in theaters. I can't recommend it higher enough. I really, really was charmed by this movie. And just looking at the costumes and the trailer, oh. your props to whoever designed those, I could definitely see that taking some awards. Yeah, you know, and again, I'm not the, you know, audience <laughs> for that, but you? I was, you know, stunned by the dress. And of course, they have to be that way Absolutely. with this setting. But yes, really a wonderful movie. All right, now looking into Gone in the Night. Gone in the Night. Wow. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're watching a movie and you're saying, wow, this is really good. This is really good. I'm really into this. And then suddenly the movie just jumps the track, bursts into flames, and explodes on you. <laughs> That's this movie. Gone in the Night. And there we see Winona Ryder. Always liked her. And she's involved with a much younger man. And they, on a whim, decide they're going to go on a vacation. And they go to an Airbnb. But wouldn't you know it, the Airbnb is already booked by another couple. Hmm, well, this is awkward. The other couple reluctantly says, well, why don't you come on in, we'll spend the night, and, you know, we'll sort this out in the morning. Good enough, we'll do that. Well, the morning comes, oh, yeah, there's a little bit of that. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. okay. Well, the morning comes, and that's a clue, because when she wakes up in the morning, guess what? Her boyfriend has run off with that other woman, and she is obviously back on her heels by this whole thing. She goes back to town tries to, you know, put her life back together, and she knows that this guy wasn't right for her, but it bothers her. And so she decides she wants to contact this other woman. She calls Dermot Mulrooney, you'll see in a minute. He owns the Airbnb and says, hey, can you give me some information about this woman? And he's like, no, that really isn't ethical, but, you know, they start to maybe have a friendship. And then, I can't tell you what happens in them, but let me tell you, it becomes the stupidest thing oh. you've ever seen. We find out what happens to this guy, and it's something that, yeah, impossible to predict. You're right. It's impossible to predict because it doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> Again, you know, this is the type of movie that when you're done watching it, you say to yourself, self, I could make a better movie than that. And you're right. You probably could make a better movie than that. So even though I like Winona Ryder, and even though I was sucked in by the first hour, this thing, boy, really goes in the wrong direction. So skip Gone in the Night. Go see Mrs. Harris instead. Hey, at least we got one that's a five That's, right. that's right. All right. Thanks so much, Chuck. You bet. <laughs>
Central Illinois' most accurate forecast with meteorologist Jack Gerfin. I'm outside in the JT's Tree and Crane Weather Garden, and we've got cloudy skies. The pavement's a little wet out here in the garden because of some of the light rain that we had, and there's a little coolness, but kind of dampness to the air that's out here. But uh, we've got our town Mac Tune coming up later on this evening, and if you want to, we have weather radios that you can buy for $34.95. Uh, and Jacob and Kevin are going to be there. Kevin for sure. Jacob, I'm pretty sure, will be there, but Kevin for sure, uh, and they'll program them for you. If you already have one of these, you can actually bring it, and they'll also program it too if maybe the settings got out of whack so um, a great opportunity to do that and again it's for our town Mat Mattoon later on today here's what things look like though from above on our Champaign floor America I camera more in the way of cloud cover some light rain showers here and there the rain showers as you can see have been trying to move into the area they've been also unfortunately still kind of fizzling out very slowly I know we do need the rain we've got kind of that uh, that heavier band of rain that formed over Ford County and then now moved over across the border into Indiana and it just seems like a lot of the heavier more steady rain is having a hard time getting across I-55 so once again that is still kind of how things are we've got more in the way of some heavier rain and storms out in the northwest corner of the state so we'll see if that's able to hold together but obviously we're gonna be dealing with these clouds and these light rain showers for at least the next about two to three hours or so where there's a bit more in the way of some rain temperatures are cooler where it's drier it is warmer and we've also got kind of the same situation occurring with our dew points too it's just warmer and more humid down to our south compared to the northern part of our viewing area so for today we'll top out at 85 that's going to be if we see some clearing later this afternoon if we stay kind of cloudy with some more of these rain showers probably more in the way of some low 80s out there which you'll see with our future track so we've got over the next couple hours these rain showers which will be pretty light passing on through by about one o'clock or so two o'clock or so i think a lot of us would end up being fairly dry and then we might even see some breaks in the clouds too and again at that point you know three four o'clock would be when we have the chance of getting into the uh, middle 80s if that's a possibility but then as we go into the evening our clouds come back in as well as our chance for showers and storms so we're thinking kind of by late afternoon early in the evening our chance for storms will be back and those will continue tonight into potentially early tomorrow morning. So we'll drop down to 70 with our chance for those uh, few showers and storms. Southeast winds at 5 to 10 miles an hour. And a few of them could still linger into early tomorrow morning. After that, though, we've got a lot of dry time for Saturday, but then later on in the evening, the chance of rain returns, and that will then continue into Sunday. Saturday's temperature, though, will be much warmer, coming in at around 90. But like I said, we've got a chance for maybe some leftover rain showers early in the morning, and then it's not until later on in the evening where rain comes back. So actually, a lot of the day tomorrow should actually be pretty dry. You can go outside and enjoy the weekend. Temperatures, though, will be cooler on Sunday because we've got more rain expected on Sunday. But then after that, that's it. Temperatures will be heating back up. Starting on Monday, it's dry at that point, too, so drought concerns are still going to be uh, one of the things we're going to look out for over the next seven days because, like I said, once we're done with Sunday's rain, it's dry the rest of our forecast, and also our temperatures look to heat back up, too. We'll be right back after this.
This is The Morning Show. A Fourth County man is dead after a car crash. It happened yesterday on I-57 between Champaign and Rantoul. State police say Kyle Messer from Paxton was driving south when his car hit a guardrail. His car caught fire. He was pronounced dead on the scene. Well, we now know the name of the woman who was shot and killed on Thursday morning. 34-year-old Latoya Gwynn was involved in a domestic dispute at her home near Beardsley Avenue and 5th Street right here in Champaign. Police say they have already interviewed the other person involved, but they've not yet made an arrest because they're still going through some of the evidence. Deputies are still investigating after a dog was found dead and discarded in a suitcase. And this happened in DeWitt County. The sheriff there says the suitcase was found July 1st along a creek on Green Valley Road. And then the dog's body was taken to animal control for more investigation and testing. Authorities have already done over 20 interviews, but yet again, no one has been arrested. A bird in Logan County has tested positive for West Nile virus. It was found in Lincoln, and so far 11 counties have reported the virus. Health officials say the best way to reduce the spread is avoiding and getting rid of mosquitoes. That means wearing repellent and getting rid of standing water. People who find dead birds in Logan County are asked to report them to the Department of Public Health. And state police are investigating the Iroquois County Public Health Director. They say that their office received information regarding accusations of criminal conduct. Iroquois County board members confirm that's in connection to overtime pay. State police will not give any more details on the case since the investigation is still active. Well, there are new numbers that show the demand for abortion services at Planned Parenthood in Illinois has increased tenfold from one of our neighboring states. Doctors in Wisconsin are no longer able to perform abortions, and those in Illinois are now trying to handle those additional appointments. So to balance the scale, Wisconsin doctors are starting to travel to our state several days a week, and then filling the gap at a clinic in Waukegan as well, not far from the border. This is clear evidence that abortion restrictions and bans do not stop people from having abortions. So that was the CEO of Planned Parenthood in Wisconsin who says they've been planning for the possibility of an abortion ban for years now. And that's why the Waukegan Clinic opened back in 2020. And firefighters in Champaign and Urbana are learning how to better protect you. They're doing high-rise training at the U of I Sherman Hall this week. The two departments train together because most of the area's high-rises are near the Champaign-Urbana line. They say it would take both departments to control one of those fires. An instructor says trying to fight a fire in a high-rise is very different from fighting one in a house. If we can have a fire knocked out and pretty much out in a matter of the time we get on the scene, in a minute or two minutes or whatever, right? Very quickly. This, by the time we get water on the fire, it could be 20 minutes, it could be 15 minutes, it could be 30 minutes, all based on how high up it is, what the challenges are, and everything's in our favor. And that training wraps up today. All right, that's going to wrap up the morning show on WCIA. But before that, we'll get one last check of the forecast with Jack. Jack, we made it to the end of the week, and as we saw earlier this morning, we've got some of those rain showers to help this drought. Yep, it's pretty light right now, so it's just kind of making things feel, uh, you know, slightly more comfortable out there. It's not going to be just as hot or as humid today, um, but uh, hopefully the rain that's a little bit more steady will get here and it'll provide us with some help. If not, we've got more chances for showers and storms we're thinking Saturday night going into Sunday. All right, thanks for joining us. Have a safe and relaxing weekend.